Hello everyone, it's me, Mr. Sneaky, and today is a very special video. As the title says, it's going to be my ultimate guide for everyone for a season reset. We're going to go over what a season reset is for all those new players that still don't know what is it entails. And then we're going to explain a bit more on the season reset and what you guys should be doing as some general tips to prepare for when it comes to a season reset. So stay tuned for all that juicy information with me, Mr. Sneaky. Hello, so yes, we're going to be going over everything you're going to need to know about a season reset. So smash a like, comment and subscribe before we get straight into all of the juicy knowledge that you guys have been waiting for. So a season reset, how does a season reset work? It's pretty simple really. So every season is split up into so many days. So, so far it's around three months and maybe a little bit extra is coverage of your season. But when you get to the end of the season, what en ends up happening is there's a few different periods. So you have your season, then your season will come to an end. And then during the end, you will have a migration period. And we'll explain what that is. And then after the migration period, you'll have your season summary, which will explain what's going to happen afterwards. So in a season reset, though, what actually disappears that's the one burning question everyone asks for and if you go to your augustone just like i did in the background there it will explain to you right here everything that you're going to need to know the main things you want to know is the hero levels and artifacts levels so when we read these blurbs out it will tell you that every new season all your heroes will reset to level one but all your heroes talents obviously will be reset however the hero star ratings and your skill levels you've invested in will not be reset. So you be obviously a season reset will put you back to one. So you only have the capability of only using the first skill. And we're going to go over that in one of the tips and don't you worry. But the same applies for your artifacts. So all your artifacts go back to level one. But all your stars you've invested into them and those skill levels increasing how strong they are per usage also stays. Any sort of item that is part of the area that is to do with leveling, so that is your CP items as well as your manuals and dust, all of these will be scrapped. So obviously everyone will be on the same playing field, at least at the start, right? So we all start on zero, all start the same, and we progress from whatever our account had progressed from the last season also your merits will be disappearing your prestige and policy systems will be resetting and obviously disappearing and your dragon trials will also reset the reason why every time you go through your dragon trials guys remember this is passive per hour prestige that you're going to gain so if this is already maxed out you're going to complete your per policies really really fast and also on the reset every time you complete these new dragon trials you get more rewards so you definitely want to keep doing it i know some people think it's a burden but trust me on this one you're gonna keep wanting these rewards obviously any medical supplies will also disappear so you can't get to any sort of healing obviously this icon needs to update because now it is the elixir when it comes to it and then the final final thing that will reset is the alliances so all the alliances will be going back to 40 members you will be choosing a zone one which we're going to be going over in a moment and then the alliance leader though will get the ability to choose exclusive right to keep the same name as last season which is a really cool thing that you're able to do so you can keep your same name you don't have to worry about someone taking it it's a really cool thing that they added but this season will reset so, we've gone over the nice basic seasonal reset overview. I hope that explains some things to you. We're going to go over basically the end stage, which is the migration and the rewards and the seasonal summary in the next stage. So, if you've been following on or if you need to go back, obviously go back to the beginning of this section and you're going to be able to obviously understand the basics of a season reset in its whole premise so with all that said let's move on so when you get to your end of season what ends up happening in at the top corner here you will get a migration 
icon and what the migration system works is pretty simple so in your season reset you will go in and you will obviously merge against so many kingdoms so you'll be against all of these kingdoms in your season one plus but at the end of that season one plus if you would like to migrate then you will be able to for the first time and by able to migrate you are only able to migrate between these servers guys so you're able to move between any of the servers you fought against obviously you might have joined maybe one of those alliances during zone two or maybe zone three and obviously made friends with them so obviously warrant you to obviously joining them in the next season so the way the migration system works is pretty simple when it comes into an option you get a very similar screen to what's on show it costs you five thousand gems guys remember that number five thousand gems if you want to migrate and you can migrate multiple times as well in 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 the migration period and the migration period lasts between two to three days so you do have a little time window for yourselves to be able to work out where you're going to be going obviously if you're an alliance you can try and get a dead server and you're able again to see that on the server divisions because when you're in the migrate stage you can see the population caps and they're all color coded with a traffic light system if you want to check that out i did do a video on it in a, a, earlier there's a big seasonal reset video coming out so if you've not checked it out check it out and it will show you all of those juicy tips with the traffic light system but it's a really easy one to understand so obviously when you migrate all that happens is your account then resets um well resets restarts in game and your server which you will notice here will have changed from for example mine was server four and it will change to server two and then with that you will also get a mail just to confirming that the migration is complete and successful so what this means now is for you next season when you go into the next fight you're going to be fighting alongside all the alliances in server two so now we've done the migration period you get to the final stage which is the season summary so this is the season summary right here and this again lasts for three days and seven hours hours guys exactly so as you can see we cover three days and then we have a seven hour increase and that is when your season will start and on this new season you can see on the season summary screen on on show is a lot of cool information that we're going to go over so you can see your new opponents so in the last season on the earlier screen you saw we was servers one two three four five and six but now we're on servers two, six, seven, eight, and nine. So that is our current opponents and servers that we are fighting against during this stage. And this will mean on the in 18 hours, we will be in a new kingdom in zone one and we're gonna be fighting against these guys obviously if we're in our region we'll be fighting but if they're not in our region obviously we're going to be meeting them in zone two so when we go to the new season introduction tab this is a really really cool tab for you to know about because the season map is where it lies so for us it might have a certain map compared to the other servers so in the current listing, as you can see, you can either start in Sephrostia, Daraland, Zoland, or Burning Lands if you're in Server 2. This information here could be different if you're in a different server. I do not know because we've not been able to fully get clarification yet from any of the other servers. But you could imagine possibly servers maybe 8 or 9 might have access to Navula, Kaltia and Forgotten Lands, right? So you can split up all the servers nicely and evenly so that everyone gets almost separated but also has a potential chance to have a little bit of conflict in Season 1. When we're going to the season features, this is going to teach you a little bit what is coming in season one plus. So you're going to get the last line of defense. So it's a really cool new event to do with the darkening onslaught that's going to be fighting between these four zones. Then you have the purifying villages. So you're going to be able to again fight against these darklings that are trying to raid all of your villages that you are occupying. 
the new pass system is going to be in the game as well as the new level tiles for the resources also what's increased is the max star ratings obviously this is a hot topic but the epic commanders can now go to five stars as well as the legendary heroes can go to six stars and so we'll go over that in the later stages of the video don't you worry and then pvp as well is now a thing of an incentive and almost forced upon the player right so now in this season you're going to be able to level any of your heroes from level one all the way to 50 by any pve means so this is killing any behemoth patrols any storyline content in the game and obviously getting forts as well and putting xp totems but as soon as you hit level 50 guys to get to level 50 to 60 you must participate in pvp combat in order to level them up so that is the new feature that is going to be in season one plus obviously we're going to be able to showcase this when it comes into play very soon obviously the overview does give you a nice little progress again kill the behemoths the passes and then end um, and then go for the flame dragon and whoever controls the flame dragon at the end obviously gets those rewards so that is the full pr uh, production on the season on how the season summary so i hope you guys have followed through all the way from the beginning and understand how a season reset works and now understand how the migration and then at the end of your season where your choices lie and how you're going to go into a new server because this is how it works guys and this is a nice quick tldr as soon as this timer runs out, we will be out of Super Server 1-2 and we're going to be instantly in a brand new Super Server with these other guys. So we're going to obviously going to be to see this on the live stream if you're going to check it out tomorrow as well when this is most likely live in the evening. So we're going to go over the quick rewards for you as well. The rewards are nice and simple. At the end of each season, you can get one of three depending on what you occupied. If you occupied a flame dragon, you're going to get the top rewards. And obviously, if, you get an, if you're an officer or a leader, the only other rewards you get is some extra gems. And this is obviously for the amount of efforts and the behind the lines dedication of obviously managing your alliance. So obviously, I like how they've incentivized that. But as an R3 member, don't you worry about it the gems is just a nice little extra at the end and with those gems what happens is or with the rewards at the end of season you get your end of rewards store so this is what you can spend in the first few days i think it lasts for about seven days at the start of the season you get to choose one of the following in the row so and as an anointed player you're going to be able to get the 10 legendary heads always get the legendary heads in this section guys obviously you're going to need them in the long run and then with all the leftover crystals you have you can go to the common store you should always again buy the legendary ascension emblem and then you can choose to your heart's content so that is the whole season reset how it works the full start to finish shebang in the way so now what i'm going to go over is some nice tips for you guys to prepare yourself to give yourself the best start when it comes to obviously a season reset so if you've enjoyed so far all of the understanding and explanation of a season smash a like comment and subscribe guys it helps me massively but with all that said let's go into all the tips that i can suggest for you to work on ready to excel in the next season which is season one plus so the very first thing we're going to go over is actually some items that you could be saving so a really good tip for a lot of players in the early game honestly is to save your dark keys it's going to be kind of sketchy when you first think of it but you can actually hold dark keys these do not reset during season so at the very start of the season what, what you can do is obviously when you're leveling and killing your first starting patrols you're going to be able to open five dark keys and then immediately open the two extra daily keys you've got from that day giving your artifacts a super quick early game boost so it's a really good tip for you guys when it comes to the very start of the very um, beginning of the season remember you can hold your dark keys and get hopefully five out of five before the new season starts and then you're going to have the best chance of getting a head start 
moving swiftly on and nicely into artifacts following up the dark chest tip is obviously focus on the right artifacts you should have played a full season now so you would have hopefully got some artifacts that you have obviously prioritized in so for me my shadow blades is going to be one of the priorities as well as my phoenix eye for priorities for pvp and obviously pve content but Obviously, there's other things I'm going to be focusing on. The Cloak of Stealth is a good one, as well as even the Green Fingers Sickle. So at the start of season, what you want to be doing, remember all of your artifacts are going to reset to level 1. So a really good thing that you could do at the very end of your season, again, as a reset and get prepared for you in the next season, is actually use some of your old emblems a lot of your green emblems would have been stacking from playing the game for such a long time that you're going to be able to actually two star at least all of these artifacts so remember you're going to be able to do that at the very very end of the season so when you're at coming maybe to the last week and you know season reset is on its way you could then be leveling up all of these guys that you've not used and you know instead of wasting all that extra xp on something that you know you're not going to be needing it on like the shadow blades because there's obviously no more behemoths to kill or no more combat to kill until obviously the new season you might as well put it somewhere where it counts. So there's a nice little tip for you guys when it comes to artifacts. And again, remember with artifacts, they come in two kinds. And that is the PvP, which has a rage cost. And then you have your PvE artifacts without a rage cost. So remember, even as a free-to-play player, guys, if your bomb flinger is a level 5 bomb flinger, it might be better than your level 1 Shadow Blades. But obviously for me, it, this is not the case because obviously everyone's account's different. Um, but obviously work with what you've got. So let's move on to the next tip. This is going to be a really good tip because a lot of you people have actually been asking this in the comments and we have not known until now. So the Season 1 Stories. As you can read here, the season one stories will be able to be replayed so you can actually listen to what they are. However, you will not receive the rewards. So right now, guys, if you're looking at the stories and you think it's a bid, you must get that completed. Why? Because remember, by completing the story, and I'm even doing it right now, you're going to be able to get some extra gems. So that's 120, 180. So that's always 300. And then we've got 400, 540 gems there. And obviously the gold keys and extra goodies when it comes to it. So you make sure you complete all of these chapters. You're going to need to and you're going to get all these rewards for doing it. But if you miss out on any of these and you don't do them, you're going to lose out on rewards. So that is a really big tip for you guys moving swiftly on following on a very similar theme scouting works the same so when it comes to scouting you got to make sure you've claimed all your rewards again you're gonna lose out on any of these raw rewards as you can see even myself i'm gonna lose out on all of these if i don't get them claimed i've got a bunch to get if i'm gonna do it in time but in the next season, just remember your mist that you've dispelled will stay dispelled. And obviously any of these rewards you've already claimed, you will already have. But the other tab here will reset and that is why it's important here. So if you can claim all your other rewards here, when you go into the new season, you're going to be able to reclaim all of these again. And the cool thing is with this, guys, if we do look at some of these, especially the camps, you'll notice the camps scale up. So you will start getting tier 4 units for free by completing these camps. So it's a really good tip to keep doing. And I know people don't enjoy it, but these do scale. So it's a really good thing to do throughout your account's history. Because obviously you're going to get some free tier 4 units and obviously level up your account for free. And you're going to need them in the long run. So remember, complete all your scouting and obviously finish in all of those seasonal rewards that you can. Otherwise, you're going to lose out on them. 
So the final tip that's going to come is actually hero base. It's what heroes are you going to be working on, right? So obviously for me, I do have access to a load of heroes. Obviously I'm going to be an archer main and with the new patch, you can see there's five to six star heroes. We're still trying to level up a hero at the moment because it does take guys an insane amount of stars to get this to level five. I'm gonna try and save up again for a massive amount of stars so we can count and obviously track how much it will cost in one go. But what we're gonna be doing is obviously needing to pick five heroes. Why five heroes? Because those five are gonna be your main primary heroes at the start and then obviously they're gonna create a deputy slot that's gonna help you level up. So for me, I'm gonna be playing my Archer Gang and so this season I'm gonna be actually playing a Nico primary with another Kanara primary. And what we'll do is later on, we're gonna obviously see the new two heroes that come. So if you're an Archer player, this is a really good tip for you because you can be saving your keys and your gems just in case you're gonna need them for the new legendary Archer hero that comes out. So I'm going to be using these two as the primaries, which means I can have my Guanwen as well as the Craig used as the secondaries. We're going to still set it up as a role based um, combat. So we're going to have one type of tree on Nico. We're going to have a different type of tree on Kanara. We're still going to build a different tree on Guanwen and Craig, just so that we have the options if we ever need them for maybe a raid. So with that, we've picked our first two DPS choices, which is really good. And what we're also going to need is two frontline units. So for me, I'm going to be picking my Madeline. Madeline's a great hero for a frontline unit. I'm also going to be picking either Husk or even Fear. Why? Because I'm going to try and use these as a flying march in the future and Hosk could be potentially going to be used as a overall match that's going to allow me to maybe expedite using maybe a extra cavalry match in the future so obviously we're going to see that obviously when it comes to season one plus we also are going to make sure we have a bakshi or emery's leveled up so we're going to be using one cav match and the reason is guys if you've noticed so far we're going to have the capabilities of running at least two archers a cav and an infantry march and if we need to we can run either a fifth uh, march being a second infantry or we could even run a mage so we have options to run a lilia or valen within that concept right and with those five primary commanders at my you know choice at my disposal it's going to mean that my leveling experience is going to be a lot easier i know from start to finish with those five heroes are what i'm going to be focusing on and then once they level 20 we're going to be able to use their deputy slot because they're already two starred so we don't have to worry about the stars we just need to get them to level 20 and then once they're level 20, we can pair them up with our second mage that we're going to be using as either a primary hero or in their deputy slot. So that's a really good tip for guys on what you should be maybe focusing on or maybe how you could be prioritizing your marches when it comes to a season reset. And this is going to be the final tip before we round up the video. So just remember, guys, when you do land right in for the very first time, you're going to be wanting to as well focus on the patrols or the dark creatures. Remember to try and go from level 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way up to 10 as fast as possible because you're going to get rewards for doing it for the first um, reward clears as well you're going to be efficiently then killing the most highest level patrol or creature that's available to you so you're going to be able to level up even more effectively obviously when we've gone and we've used all the cp what you want to be doing then is using your gathering heroes the same thing in the game your gathering heroes only now gain xp to themselves the gathering hero does not no longer gain xp for the legion so that's a very important note so you can still obviously in early game when you're trying to get really fast leveling on these guys you can still as a top tip put 
at least one or two XP bucks in Earth's Grace just to get these guys off, you know, off the finish line or off the start line and they will naturally then level themselves and you don't have to worry about leveling them up anymore. They'll do it all on their own. So obviously let your PvP and uh, all your raiding heroes focus on killing in the patrols and all the creatures and let your gathering heroes now focus on all the gathering side so i hope that clears up all the everything you're going to need to know on a season reset as well as some nice tips on the video so with all that said that is the guide concluded we're going to use this ending as well just to give you guys a little bit of a summary on the account before we do go in to the live stream and actually start going into a brand new season one plus fresh off the rip Obviously, we've been with TA now for two seasons. It's been an amazing feat. Obviously, working with TA, we've been able to discover so many mechanics in the game, as well as different march types to experiment with, which is amazing. We've also been able to work together, record, and give you guys the first ever elite raid kills in the entire world, as well as give you guys all of the best raid behemoth guys available. That's going to give you all the information to do with every ability, as well as how to kill them the most successful within the means of your alliance. So I hope you've enjoyed so far all what we've been able to bring to you within the TA and TM alliances. We are in Super Server 1. This was Server 2 as an alliance. We're going to be going into a new reset obviously against everyone in the other divisions which is going to be very fun with that so if you've enjoyed today's video guide on a complete seasonal reset on how it works the basics of a reset the migration the summary as well as all of those tips for you on what to do when it comes to a season reset to give you guys a little bit of a less of a panic button to worry about Smash the like, comment, and subscribe, guys. I'm here every day. I'm going to live stream all of my experience as we can through this season reset. So I hope you enjoy it, and we're going to be able to hopefully see the two new heroes when it comes on the 26th. So with all that said, see you later, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay safe, stay sneaky. Peace out.